welcome to another edition of WP Engine Builders. My name is Nick Diego, and I'm a developer advocate here at WP Engine. In this video today, we're going to be talking about three ways that you can curate the editing experience within WordPress. Now, there are actually many ways, many more than three, but we're going to talk about my three favorite. All right, let's get started. Okay, so before we begin, I like to kind of go over the tools that I'm using to do the demo today. So I'm going to be using WordPress 6.1. We are also going to be using the latest version of Gutenberg. You know, there's some additional features that we want to be taking advantage of. That being said, a lot of what we see you see here today can be done in just WordPress 6.1. Now I'm also going to be using the Frost theme. Uh, this is a theme that's developed internally by the developer relations team here at WP Engine. You can use any theme, but I'm going to be using Frost today. If you're interested in using Frost, just go to frostwp.com and you can download the theme directly from GitHub. So again, standard WordPress install, we're actually using local, and I have Gutenberg, and I have my Frost theme active. Now in preparation for this demo, I've created a sample page, uh, three ways to curate the editor experience, and we're gonna be talking about those three ways right now. But to do that, I wanna uh, use an example, and the best way to do that is to use a custom pattern that I've created for, uh, for this session. So I'm gonna come over here to patterns and go to featured. And I've created a very simple call to action uh, pattern. And you can see here that if we go to our list view, you can see it's a cover block. And inside of it, it's made up of a bunch of different uh, individual blocks. Now you can see here that I have these lock feature applied. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to remove this lock feature. And then I'm gonna show you how this works and why this can be such a useful way to, again, curate this editing experience for your users. Now, without a block, without being locked, anybody can insert this pattern. They can click on any of these groups, headings, paragraphs, and they can edit them. Now, this might be exactly what you wanted, but maybe there's an instance when your client or your user, you need to really restrict, again, curate that editing experience so the user doesn't inadvertently break the design. In this example, we actually, it's pretty simple, right? We have some headings, some paragraphs, and some buttons. But outside of that, we have these two groups. These two groups are handling the layout of the page and the layout of the content. Removing these two groups can have an adverse effect uh, on the design, which you may not want a user to mess with. So what we want to do here is we want to lock down the group uh, and lock down the, the settings so the user can't inadvertently move things around. So let me show you how to do that. Going to go to our cover, we're going to start with our cover block, and we're just going to apply locking. And this is the new locking functionality. Again, this is not new to 6.1. This is, came out in WordPress 6.0, but it was refined in WordPress 6.1. And you can say lock all, and this will disable the ability to move blocks within uh, or sorry, move the co cover block around and also prevent removal. Now at the cover block level, we still want the user to be able to move the cover block around the page. So for example, if we had a sample heading here, we would want the user to be able to move the cover block or call to action above and below. What we really don't want them to be doing is removing things inside of the call to action. So we actually don't care about this cover block. We want to add the locking in one level down to the group. So what I'm going to do here is you can actually access it from the list view. I'm going to go to lock. I'm going to look lock all. This will prevent the movement and removal of this block. And then I want to apply it to all the blocks inside. And when I do that, we get those lock icons again. And once a block is locked, you'll notice that there's no ability for me to move. I also can no longer remove the blocks either. So while the user can still move the whole call to action around, they can't actually remove or move the content inside of it. So this is a really good first step in terms of, you know, making the design that you've crafted as your pattern rigid so that a user can't inadvertently break that design. 
Now let's take this a step further. Perhaps inside of the call to action, we want to provide a little bit more flexibility because you see that these all these buttons are locked. Perhaps what we want to do here is we want to, let's unlock them. Let's unlock this as well. Instead of room, uh, instead of disabling movement, we only want to disable removal. So this call to action needs to have a button. So let's prevent removal. Now for this button, let's actually unlock everything. And the reason for that is maybe not every call to action needs two buttons. So this button can actually be removed. This button cannot. And let's put uh, add some locking functionality back here to prevent movement and removal. So the entire buttons block cannot be removed or moved, but inside of that, we have one button block that can't be removed and one that can, but it can still be moved. So we can still move the buttons around because we haven't locked movement, but we've just locked removal. So there's a many different ways you can set this up, but locking goes a long way in make, allowing your, your designs and your patterns uh, to be rigid so that users can't inadvertently break them. Now let's take the changes that we made here, these lock settings, and apply them to the pattern that I've created. Now there's many ways you can do this. You can type this out yourself, but my favorite way is just a good old copy and paste. So I'm gonna copy the whole cover block. Then I'm gonna hop on over to my theme file for Frost. I've added my custom pattern here called custom-cta.php. And inside of that pattern file, we have all the content in the pattern. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste. And now I've pasted in the block content. You don't, it's hard to tell much, it's hard to see that much changed. But what we have here is we have the lock values. And on the cover and on the group block up here, uh, we can see if we scroll over. Um, let's see here. All right, there we go. Uh, more template locking and the lock functionality. So you can add this attribute directly to blocks, but I find that to be way too challenging. Instead, just design it inside of the editor, copy and paste, paste it into your, into your pattern. Now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna come back over to our editor and I'm gonna refresh. We don't wanna save any of our changes. Now when I go to add my pattern, and we go to our list view, you can see that all the locking functionality that I set up, it's part of those attributes, is now present in my pattern. So a user can come in here, they can edit things, but they cannot move things around or remove them. So just one really quick way uh, to, to kind of curate your patterns um, uh, for your users. All right, let's hop over to the next the second way to curate the editing experience. And that second way is actually going to be to configure and restrict the, edit, the design settings or the design features that are available on each block. While we're here inside of our call to action, any user can come over here and mess with any of these design settings. Maybe they want their text to be purple. Maybe they want the typography to be ginormous, right? So these settings you may want to enable. However, you may not. Let's use the example of color. Maybe you only you, you don't want users to touch color at all. You know that you, you've presented a brand style guide to your client. That's exactly what they want and they don't want anybody to mess with color. Or perhaps more importantly, I think that this will happen the more often than not, is you don't want users to mess with some more advanced settings like dimensions. Dimensions you can see here on my group, for example, I have some block spacing set up. On this one, I think we have, no, not here, I think on the headings, oh, on cover, we have all sorts of, uh, uh, we have some, no, we don't have padding here. <laughs> Let's see what we got. Uh, Let's see, we have some paragraphs, dimensions, buttons, we have block gap, 
block spacing yet. So this is a fairly complicated panel for a user to interact with. Again, you might want to give people access to this, but you might not. So one of the things that you can do is you can restrict this ability in the theme.json file of the block theme. Now again, you have to be using a theme that supports theme.json, but Frost is, is one of them. So is 2023, the most recent uh, theme provided by WordPress with 6.1. So let's hop over to the uh, theme file and we will show you how this works in theme.json. So I, I'm not gonna go into all the details of theme.json. I mean, that's an entire video, many multiple videos unto itself. But what we're gonna do is, uh, theme.json is really broken into kind of mm, four sections. We have custom templates, settings, styles, and template parts. Uh, settings and styles are the two big ones. What we care about today is settings. So inside of settings, you're gonna see that we have um, this is where you define your color palette, your, your, custom, your custom variables, your layout, your spacing. There's all sorts of good stuff here. But the one we care about is blocks. And this is where we are going to define and restrict functionality on certain blocks. Um, so what I'm going to do is you can see that Frost already has some of these. So for example, buttons have their own custom, sp custom spacing scale. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, um, let's actually use the button option. We're going to say, I want to define a, let's see here, we'll do, actually, we're going to use the spacing scale here. And we're going to say, uh, uh, block gap, false. We're going to do padding, false, and margin, false. And we're going to save this. So now when we come over to our pattern here and we go to a button block, now normally button has padding, and when I refresh this, let's update it, when we refresh, this button no longer has that dimension panel. Let me, let me toggle back and forth to show you what this looks like. So we'll turn this on to true. We'll refresh. Go to button. Now we have our dimensions panel. Go back over here, set it to false. Give it a refresh. And now that dimension panel is gone. So users cannot edit that at all. Let's do border. You can do border border. I think if I just do border false, this should work. Oops, it's telling me that does not work. All right, I think we need border, we need radius, false. Okay, there we go. So unfortunately, at this uh, in, in WordPress right now, you have to define each of these things individually. Um, so if we go back to button, we can see that uh, the buttons just have border, they don't have like border width and you know all that kind of stuff. They just have a uh, radius. But again, if we do false here and we refresh, now buttons can no, the border can no longer be set. So you can see how we've taken this fairly complicated panel and we've shortened it, we made it smaller. And we can do the same thing for color and typography. I'll include a link in the uh, show notes that gives you more information about all the different settings that you can turn on and off. But this is just one way where you can really restrict the functionality. For example, in Frost, all of our buttons are square. They don't have radius. Um, so you could, as a, if you were, if I was designing this for a client and they only want square buttons, I would probably come to theme.json and I would turn border off for all buttons. And that's just a really quick and easy way that you can constrain the functionality within WordPress depending on what your users need. Again, I'm not gonna go through all the details, all, all of this, but you could restrict this further and further and further um, to you know, get rid of typography, get, uh, get rid of color, everything. Now, the one thing to note here is that you cannot restrict this functionality in certain contexts. So for example, if I only wanted to restrict color selection to this pattern, you can't do that. You have to turn it all off um, at the block level or you can also you can also turn things off at the at the main level. You can completely turn off functionality. So if I was to go to, for example, spacing, 
and I came down here and I did padding false, you'll notice if I refresh now, nothing has padding. So the dimension panel, padding is no longer there. And I'll, let, me, let me turn off margin too so you can really see how this works. Uh, if we go to margin false, and then we refresh, and we come over here, we can see that the dimension, there's no more margin and padding on anything. No blocks have margin and padding anywhere. Um, again, that might be something, that might be the way you want to set things up, but just know that you can either set it at the, the main level, at the spacing, uh, color, uh, so on and so forth levels, or you can set it at the block level like we did with buttons where in the block settings, we turned radius off just for just for, for buttons. This is a really super powerful technique uh, and you can really kind of customize it to meet your needs, but you have a lot of flexibility to turn off the functionality here in the sidebar for block. All right, so now let's move on to the third technique for curating the editing experience. And this is probably the most, the, mo the maximalist approach to really lock things down. And this is brand new with WordPress 6.1, which is kind of the main reason I wanted to do this video here. So what I've shown you here is how we can lock certain things so things can't be moved around. We've restricted functionality in theme.json. But again, the restriction in theme.json is global. It affects the whole site. And the locking is pretty minimalistic because you're preventing moving and removal, but users still have tons of access to the sidebar. So let me come back over here and I'm just going to back out all my changes uh, from theme.json so we can back out and make sure we're back to where we started. Save this again. Now I'm going to refresh. So again, users, we have, we have our pattern. It is locked, um, but it's still pretty flexible. People can change all sorts of stuff. Let's pretend that you wanted to deliver a design where you only wanted users to be able to edit the actual content pieces. So that would be changing the text, changing the links on buttons, maybe changing this image background. But everything else was locked down. Well, that is now available in what's known as content only editing within WordPress. There is no user interface for this. However, what we can do is we can simply come over to our pattern here, and we're gonna do this at the cover block. So what we wanna do is we wanna have our cover block and everything inside of that, it's restricted to content only editing. So what I'm gonna do is in the beginning, I'm gonna do template lock, and then I'm gonna say, content only. So this is a, you have to add this manually currently. Uh, there's no, again, there's no user interface for this. But if you add this to a container block, and currently right now it's groups, columns, and, and cover blocks. So they're the only three blocks that are currently supported. But these are our main, you know, kind of container blocks. You add this to attribute to those blocks, we'll save. Come over here, we'll give a little refresh. Let's get rid of our start from scratch here. Now when I go and I add this pattern, looks the same, but when I click on it, there's notice that there's nothing over here. There's nothing in the sidebar. When I click on my list view, there's no drop down. I can't see the blocks inside of this container. But what I can do is I can click on my heading. I can change some things like make things bold, italics, add links. I can, you know, do these, you know, minor changes. I can change the text. I can, you know, keep typing. I can change the buttons, but notice I can't move the buttons around. I can't switch buttons. I also can't remove any of this stuff. I can't change padding, margin, color, anything. Everything is locked down. All I can do is edit the content. And this provides some really interesting ways to curate the editing experience of the WordPress. Because if you're delivering content to an to a client and, or you know, a user or something like that, and you've carefully crafted a pattern, this allows you to completely lock that down. 
give users the flexibility to change content, but nothing else. Your design remains static, unchanging, the exact way you designed it. But let me just show you here, you can re do media too. So users can again change content, text, and they can change images. So here we can still change our uh, background image. So we can pick from our library different image of waves here. And so I can continue to change the content, but everything else is locked down. Now, the final thing to note about this is that under the three dots at the container level, you'll see this option to modify. And if you click modify, everything comes back. You can now edit everything. And again, these locks are from before, but you can now edit everything. And when you're done, you just click done. Right now, anybody can, un can modify a content only restricted piece of content. Um, but in the future, there's probably gonna be ways that you can determine, let me click done here. You can determine who can actually modify this. So for example, you could restrict it to only administrators or certain user roles. That currently does not exist, but it could come in the future. So content only editing is kind of like if you look at a spectrum, we have locking, and then we have theme.json, uh, which you know removes uh, functionality, and then content-only editing locks everything down. Uh, and it's probably the, the, in my opinion, probably the most elegant approach where it just removes everything, allows you to present a completed design pattern, and gives users the flexibility to edit the content, but not mess with the design, inadvertently break the design, uh, add colors that shouldn't be there, you know, so on and so forth. So I really hope uh, that you'll you know, check out this new functionality in WordPress 6.1 and um, see how you can use it in the real world. Uh, right now, it's the first introduction, introduction of this technology, and it's going to be iterated on in the future. Locking was a big hit. Again, that was released in 6.0. That's continually getting improved as we go, move forward. And this content-only editing is really the next step. So that's all I have for you today. Again, there's so many ways to curate the editing experience. These are just three of them, or three of them. Uh, I'm gonna add another link in the show notes to it, a uh, developer handbook article that covers almost all of the ways that you can curate the editing experience. But these are my favorite. These are the ones that I think I, I would use most in, in the real world. Okay, so thank you so much for watching today's video about how to curate the editing experience within WordPress. Again, my name is Nick Diego, a developer advocate here at WP Engine. If you'd like to catch more videos about modern WordPress development techniques, make sure to like and subscribe this video and stay tuned for more content from us here at WP Engine Builders. Have a great day.